Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Happy Halloween. Hope you all are having a phenomenal day. Got to take my kids out trick-or-treating here in just a few minutes, but wanted to just jump on and do a live video here with y'all. Uh, we're going to chat about the top five causes of chronic fatigue. Again, when people complain of fatigue or complain of being tired, a lot of times there's usually more than one cause. And there could be one major cause, but then there could be multiple kind of side causes, or there could be a lot of different small causes as well that contribute. You can see them in both camps. I'm going to go over that in today's video. Uh, before you do, please put your comments down below on the topic. Let me know what you think, think of the video and what you found compelling and anything you want to add. Love to hear about it as there, uh, there as well. And please smash that like button, hit that thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications of more great content coming your way. All right, so number one cause of fatigue. First thing is low iron. You're going to see this more in females that are menstruating because they're going to be having menstrual flow and losing blood every month. You could also see it in vegan, vegetarian, people that are not eating animal protein. So low iron. You need iron to bind to hemoglobin. That carries oxygen, and oxygen is really important for aerobic metabolism. So if you look at the Krebs cycle, you need that good oxygenation to run the aerobic metabolism. Think of the um, science class in middle school, right? You have the candle, right? This lit, you put a jar over the candle. What happens in a few seconds? The candle goes out because you need oxygen. So iron helps carry that oxygen. Now with guys, too much iron can definitely cause extra oxidative stress. The best way around that is just keep blood a couple times a year. Not a big deal. Do some lab tests. Do like my comprehensive bio screen. That takes a lot like 10, 12 vials of blood, usually twice a year on that. Maybe give blood once or twice a year. Usually you're gold, but the big thing is going to be iron, and you're going to see it with vegan, vegetarians, and women that have usually estrogen dominance and low progesterone. They're going to be bleeding a lot. And then the other category could be significant malabsorption, a lot of gut inflammation, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, a lot of gut issues, low stomach acid, low HCL, chronic Prilosec, PPI usage, right? Proton pump inhibitors that could drive the iron as well. Second, adrenal issues. May not be necessarily the Addison's where you're adrenal failure, but it can be more just the adrenal dysfunction, low cortisol, flatter cortisol rhythm. Cortisol is a glucocorticosteroid, so it helps with energy, gluco, blood glucose, energy. Corticosteroid, it helps with stress and inflammation. So if we have chronically low cortisol due to chronic stress, chronic inflammation, lots of things feed into that, right? Foods, blood sugar, in, um, sleep, too much exercise, too little exercise, nutrient deficiencies, gut malabsorption. Remember, 80% of your immune systems in your gut. So if you have chronic immune stress because your gut's on fire, that can feed into adrenal stress. So adrenals would be a big one. It could be flatter and lower cortisol. You don't necessarily have to be in the cortisol failure camp like with Addison. So you want to do a free and total cortisol to see where you sit, and you want to do it throughout the day, not just a one-time sample in the morning or an ACTH stim test, which is they would do in Addison's disease. Three is going to be thyroid issues. A lot of times with chronic thyroid issues, there's going to be an autoimmune component. The antibodies, thyroid binding globulin or TPO, thyroid peroxide, are attacking the thyroid and decreasing its, in, decreasing its ability, I should say, increasing its inability to make uh, less hormone over time. So you're making less hormone over time, a chronic inflammation. A lot of times during the attacks, you can spill out hormones. So you can go to these hyper anxiety. You feel like you're making too much. You almost feel like you have a Graves hyper issue, but you really have this autoimmune um, Hashimoto's issue that's eventually going to deplete your thyroid follicles and you'll actually be in this low thyroid state. So Hashimoto's and or low thyroid function. And again, you could have T4 to T3 conversion issues because T4 is your inactive, T3 is your active. And if you don't convert, if you're not at an equal level because of low nutrients, um, selenium, zinc, magnesium, uh, CoQ10, um, those are really important things. High, chronically high cortisol can do that. Insulin resistance, these can be big things. So we have um, adrenal, we have thyroid, we have low iron. And so I would also put in here mitochondrial. Mitochondrial, this could be our B vitamins, our magnesium, our CoQ10, our carnitine. These are nutrients to help supercharge our body's ability to generate ATP for fuel, right? This is important. So our body needs these things. Now, why would those nutrients go low? There could be a malabsorption thing. There could be just your diet's really crummy, lots of processed foods, lots of sugar, lots of inflammatory grains, lots of junky omega-6 fatty acids that are depleting your antioxidant reserves. All of those things could be at play. Not sleeping enough, doing too much exercise. So all of these things could be at play. So you have to look at the whole nine yards. So those mitochondrial nutrients, I think would also play a chronic, a really important role. Last but not least, guess what? Gut. Because if your gut is chronically inflamed, whether it's from food, infection, SIBO, fungal overgrowth, H. pylori, parasites, 
80% of your immune system is in your gut. And if your gut's chronically inflamed, guess what's happening to your immune system? It's getting fired up over and over and over. And when your immune system gets fired up, guess what happens? It allocates resources to dealing with the immune stressor. Think about this, right? Think about if you got a viral infection or you um, get ill, what tends to happen? One of the hallmark side effects is tend to get a fever. Why? Because that actually can kill off bacteria and viruses. Number two, you get tired, right? Because the body wants to take all those resources and allocate it towards dealing with the infection. And so if you have chronic immune stress and 80% of your immune systems in the GALT, the gastric associated lymphoid tissue and the malt, the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue, and you're chronically firing up that immune response, Guess what's going to happen? You may feel tired because that immune system is sucking up resources. So you really got to be careful. Got to look at the gut. Got to look under the hood. Got to make sure the food's not the issue. The SIBO, the CFO, the, the parasites, the H. pylori. Got to look at all that. So break down the top five. Anemia, low iron. That can be if you're PMS or a PMS age, right? You're in that, you know, 15, 13 to late 40s, early 50s. You're menstruating. You have heavy flow. You're estrogen dominant. Or vegan, vegetarian, you're not eating it, right? You could also put the gut people in there, chronic gut issues, you're malabsorbing it. Second is going to be adrenal issues, that low, chronically low cortisol. Next will be hypothyroid slash Hashimoto slash T4, T3 conversion. Fourth is going to be your mitochondrial, the B vitamins, the CoQ10, all the nutrients to run your systems that require ATP, carnitine, electron transport chain. And then the last one, last but not least, was the gut and the chronic immune stress in the gut and how that would negatively impact your body's energy pathways because you're going to pull a lot of energy and resources to help your immune system fight what's going on. So guys, if you enjoyed today's video, let me know, put it in the comments, these five things, a lot of times two out of the three, three out of the three, sometimes with chronic fatigue people that are like kind of CFS or fibromyalgia, you can see all five happening there. Then you throw some lime, then you throw some mold and guess what? It's just like, boom. Because lime and mold are going to jack up your gut. They're going to jack up your mitochondria. They're going to jack up your adrenals. They can kind of hit everything at the same time. So you really got to have a good practitioner who looks under the hood and doesn't just say, oh, it's only lime. Well, what about this over here? You got to have someone that's open-minded that can surveil the landscape and just take audit of everything that could be going on. So if you guys want to reach out to myself, there'll be a link down below where you can reach out to myself, my staff, my colleagues. We're here to help you. We can get you on the books here and kind of dive in and try to get to the root cause of why you have your health concerns. That's always the focus. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, give me a thumbs up. Comments down below. Feel free and share with family and friends. I've got one question here for y'all. I'll hit. Is it true that nutrients like folate are good for the body, aren't necessarily good for the brain? I'm not sure about that. I mean, folate's important for methylation. Very important. Again, you're going to get it in meats, leafy greens. So I don't see a problem with that. A good multivitamin will have L-M-T-H-F folate. So I don't see any problem with that at all. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, thumbs up, share with friends or family, reach out below for more support. Have a good one, y'all, and happy Halloween.